the hydrogen spectrum and Bohr's model. How looking at the light given off by hydrogen atoms led to a dramatic change in the way we think about atoms. When we place a gaseous element in a tube and run an electric current through the gas, light is given off. The typical arrangement has the tube attached to a power supply, which provides a high voltage current of electricity that breaks the substance into separate atoms that then give off light. The interesting fact is that each element gives off a different spectrum of colors. Here are five different elements. We can do this with elements that are normally gases at room temperature, or with elements that are normally solids or liquids at room temperature. In the latter two cases, we simply have enough current that we have enough energy to produce some vapor for the substance. Spectrum of each element is unique, and elements can be identified by the spectrum. Here are the visible spectra of five elements. Hydrogen, nitrogen, sodium, potassium, and xenon. The spectra are shown with energy increasing from left to right. That is, the lower energy part of the spectrum, the red end, is on the left, and the higher energy end of the spectrum, the violet end, is on the right. You will notice that these are not continuous spectra, as you would see if you looked at the spectrum of the sun or an ordinary light bulb, but rather a series of lines. The lines are distinct and unique to the element, but every element has a set of lines. Some elements, like hydrogen, have very few lines. Others, like xenon, have a lot of lines. Let's take a closer look at the spectrum of hydrogen. In the visible region of the spectrum, there are only four lines. One in the red region, one in the blue-green region, one in the indigo region, and one in the violet region. You will notice that, in addition to the fact that there are very few lines in the spectrum, as the energy of the lines increases, the lines appear to get closer together. In the 1860s and early 1870s, Anders Jonas Engström measured the lines in the visible spectrum of hydrogen. Scientists eventually found more lines in the near ultraviolet region, just beyond the visible region, that continued the pattern. What was eventually discovered was that as the energy increases, the lines in the spectrum get closer and closer together. They eventually get so close together that they are impossible to separate, and then they suddenly stop. There is a limit to the energies of the lines. This interested and perplexed the scientific community because it did not fit their understanding of how the light could be generated. At the suggestion of a friend, Edward Hagenbach, a Swiss mathematician named Johann Balmer studied the lines in the spectrum and found a very interesting and relatively simple formula that gave their wavelengths. Since we are more interested in energy, I'll express it in terms of energy. E is the energy of the line. RH is a constant called the Rydberg constant. And N is a whole number greater than 2. Just a couple of quick mathematical points here. We have an equation that has a single variable to determine a number of energies. This is quite unusual and unexpected. In addition, the values of the variable are whole numbers. Eventually, other series of lines were discovered in the hydrogen spectrum. If we continue into the far ultraviolet region of the spectrum, we find another series named after American physicist Theodore Lyman, who discovered the first line in 1906. And in the infrared region, of lower energy than the red region of the visible spectrum, we find a third series, named after the German physicist Friedrich Paschen, who first discovered it in 1908. 
Both series are very much like the Balmer series in that, as the energy increases, the lines get closer together and eventually stop. The Lyman series limit is the extreme limit of the hydrogen spectrum. That is, there are no more lines in the hydrogen spectrum as we go to higher energies. You might expect that there would also be a formula for each of these series like that of the Balmer series. And you would be right. The Lyman formula and the Pachen formula are identical to the Balmer formula, except for the whole number in the formula. We can combine these formulas into a single one with two variables, n1 and n2, which are both whole numbers with n2 greater than n1. There is one more item of significance to the spectrum. The ultimate limit of the hydrogen spectrum, that is, the line with the highest energy in the spectrum, just happens to be the exact energy needed to remove from the atom the only electron in the hydrogen atom. This strongly suggests that the lines in the spectrum are related to the electron in the atom somehow. There are two key points about the spectrum of hydrogen, and indeed about all spectra of the elements. These two points are, one, the spectrum of hydrogen, and indeed of all the atoms, is made up of discrete lines which are specific energies of light. Two, these energies are related to the electron in the atom. The reasoning is that since the highest energy is the energy to remove the electron, the other energies may represent the electron changing energy and position in the atom. But how does one get only a specific set of energies for these changes? Imagine a staircase 11 feet high, one with irregular distances between the steps of 2 feet, 3 feet, and 6 feet. If we imagine going down from one step to any other and measure the distances we have gone, we will get specific values for the changes and only those specific values. We could have a change of two feet, three feet, six feet, five feet, nine feet, or 11 feet. Notice that we would never get a change of 1, 4, 7, 8, or 10 feet, or of any value that's not a whole foot. There is just no place for us to stop as we come down where we would have gone down 4 feet, for example. On the other hand, if we had an 11 foot ramp, instead of a staircase, we could stop anywhere on the ramp. This means that we could get any height change between 0 and 11 feet. That is, we get any possible value. Niels Bohr's contribution was to realize that having specific values for the energy changes for an electron meant that there were specific amounts of energy that an electron could have in the atom. He interpreted this to mean that the electron could orbit the nucleus only at certain specific distances from the nucleus, which had specific energies. Electrons orbit the nucleus at certain fixed distances and specific energies. The spectrum was produced when an electron dropped from a higher energy orbit to a lower energy one, giving off a specific amount of energy. Because his model looks a bit like the solar system, with the electrons orbiting the nucleus like the planets orbit the sun, it is sometimes called the solar system model. 